Hello and welcome to Auto Inform Online Magazine. My name is Frank Massey and in this how-to feature I'd like to take a look at pressure sensors. Pressure sensors come in all shapes, sizes, they perform different functions. The particular sensor I've chosen in this case for this presentation is an obvious choice because it's very easily um, identified, very easy to access and also the opportunity of measurement lends itself into three uh, distinct areas as do all pressure sensors. This particular pressure sensor is a MAP or Manifold Absolute Pressure Sensor. It measures in effect air pressure. There are of course fluid measurement uh, sensors as well, so the, the same test profile applies to all sensors. The key consideration with a pressure sensor is that it works on a 5 volt range, so therefore there will be a reference voltage of 5 volts, a ground reference and a signal output. Depending on the application, that output will be of a range of around 0.5 to 4.5 volts. In some cases, that range may start midway, for example, on turbo systems where the pressure can go both negative and positive. The neutral uh, range may well be around 2.25 volts. This particular sensor converts um, negative uh, uh, pressure less than atmosphere. Let's call it a pressure less, less than atmosphere, which is manifold pressure, into a voltage. Opportunities should always be taken when faced with a potential sensor fault or DTC or a drivability issue as to what the actual cause is and be careful not to blame the symptoms. If a range is out then the possibilities could be that it's the environment. In other words the actual events that take place in the manifold are actually wrong therefore you'll get the wrong value from the sensor. It could be the sensor is out of range, it's, it's a component error. It could be that the supply voltage, ground or signal circuit coherence or plausibility is an issue which will require electronic testing. Initially, the information I suggest will be gathered through a scan tool. You'll probably have a DTC, be guided by DTC. And also take into account that there may actually not be a DTC because these components operate through quite a variable range. In order to determine a fault, they have to be severely out of range or out of specification. So quite often you don't go DTC for these kinds of problems. I've also had instances where we have had a DTC suggesting that the pressure sensor is faulty when it was caused by misfiring uh, from an ignition system. And the um, volatile nature of the pressure in the manifold flagged the DTC. It wasn't actually a problem with, with the, the MAP sensor. It was an ignition problem, so be very flexible in your um, thought process uh, and diagnostic uh, measurement. We're going to begin looking at serial data. We're going to be comparing serial data with live measurement. The gauge we use uh, is a gauge we have designed and built and is available in our online shop. Um, it's one that we have um, a great deal of confidence in because one of the problems is getting accurate gauging and measurement. We wanted a gauge that would go negative minus one bar for manifold intake systems, which indeed this is, and plus two bar for turbo testing. Um, and we also, in connection with this, would also use serial evaluation as well. And of course, the common sense here is that this is, re this is real time, that this, this value should be reflected with the data from the scan tool. That gives us confidence that the sensor um, um, sensitivity, the plausibility, the wiring, all of those aspects are accurate so we can trust then the data serially. So the gauge is connected by a simple piece of hose, it tees into, this, oh, it tees into the, the manifold circuit. This is a direct fitting um, MAP sensor, in other words there is no piece of hose connecting it to the engine, in some cases there are. But nonetheless, we're still measuring the same environment, which is the manifold pressure. The first opportunity of test with any pressure sensor is what we call plausibility. What is its value when there's no activity in the circuit? Now, we're measuring a manifold. The engine's not running, therefore there should be one atmosphere in there. So, simply key on. Take a look at manifold pressure. 101.4 kPa. That's one bar of pressure quite happy with that. Um, so the basic plausibility is good. Therefore, based on that value, 
we can uh, be assured that the voltage supply, 5 volts, the ground reference and the plausibility or the coherence of that signal is getting back to the ECU satisfactorily. So initially I'm happy with that. The next stage now is to run the engine and monitor the actual value of the sensor, both serially and with the gauge. With the gauge, I'm expecting around 20 inches of mercury. And um, well, let's see what, what value the, the scan tool interprets that value as well. Just before we start the engine, just to recap the three opportunities, we're going to look at serial data. We're going to look at the, uh, the live or real world value uh, using the gauge and the final measurement, uh, which at the moment is off camera, we're going to have a look at the oscilloscope and we're going to be using the picoscope to look at the electronic profile from the pressure sensor, which contains a lot of valuable information. Rather than looking at data and numbers, um, it gives another opportunity to look at the sensitivity um, and the performance of the sensor actually in real time whilst the engine's running, but that, we'll do that one later. Let's start the engine. Due to the cranking process, which obviously causes a drop in voltage, um, the tools dropped out. So we need to go through the, the setup menu again to re-establish communication. So the first choice, of course, is Rover. Model variant 45. Drivetrain or engine. MEMS3 is the management system variant and the default monitor list is the choice, live data. And on the first page of that data is the manifold pressure. Now first of all, let's take a look at the real world. The real world is the gauge. An average value from a four-cylinder multi-valve engine is around 20 inches of mercury. What we're looking, let me just pop this down for a moment. So what we're looking for from this gauge is a very steady needle. These are undamped gauges. The reason we don't use glycerin damping is that we don't want to inhibit needle movement at all. These gauges have been very, very carefully thought out and, and chosen for this purpose. That is a perfectly um, stable needle. The value is fractionally above 20 inches of mercury, which is, is about 40 kPa. It's steady, the value is right. We're gonna do some other tests later on um, just to challenge this. Now, of course, if you're suffering sticky valves or um, any turbulence in the manifold, then clearly this gauge will demonstrate that. There'll be, there'll be movement in the needle, and there isn't. That's good. With the introduction of heat or increased engine speed, if there's tappet jacking or anything like that, then once again, there'll be a, a um, reaction to this gauge instantly. It has a long hose attached, so this gauge can actually be brought into the vehicle, driven down the road, and measurements or observations made from the gauge, which is why it's got a four-inch clock face, so basically we can see it easily. Happy with the gauge. I expect to see somewhere around 40 kPa serially. We're very close to that figure, so uh, 37, nearly 38 kPa. I trust the figure. Um, I have no problem, I trust the gauge. So I'm happy that the plausibility and the sensitivity of the map sensor matches the real world. In other words, this is what's actually taking place in the manifold, and the value from that pressure sensor is reporting back to the ECU with the correct value. So um, the expectation is that this is a MAP sense system, so the fueling control of this engine is predominantly from the MAP sensor and the coolant sensor. And without the accuracy from that component, this vehicle will not fuel correctly. So the consideration here is that uh, any DTCs relating to emission problems or fueling problems, fuel trim, one of the key tests that you must carry out is the plausibility of the map sensor or pressure sensor. So much for this, so I'm happy with those results. We can exercise the throttle, look at the values at higher speed, but I think that will be better demonstrated using the picoscope. So what I'd like to do now is uh, a brief pause, change the camera position so we can have a look at the screen and take a look at how we observe map sensors electronically using the Pico. Welcome back. I want loads what of money for we've it. done um, in the short break is connect the picoscope up to the pressure sensor 
um, we've connected the signal um, output and we've, we've done um, a ground reference from the component itself. So we've done a floating ground reference. The reason for that is to get a very nice clean image. And when we start the engine, which I'm going to do very shortly, um, you will note that the image is very clean. We've removed a lot of the background interference. So I think the first process is we'll start the engine, go through the, 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 the test we, we intend to conduct, switch off, and then discuss the images we've captured um, in, in, in peace and quiet. So let's start the engine. Started the engine, we'll go back to that image because there's some very useful information there. Um, I want the engine to, we, the engine is already warm, it's run, it's run for a while. Um, I want the idle, the, the idle to stabilise because that also has some very interesting features in it and um, there may be some variance, in other words the fault may be intermittent, um, the instability may be a process as, as, that, that occurs when the engine gets warmer. Um, higher engine speed, they're, they're all options you've got of actually exercising the engine through all of these um, environments. I'm going to do basically what we call a, a wide open snap throttle test, a wide open uh, a watt test. Um, let the engine speed decay naturally and then just go and switch the engine off and then we'll take a look at the image. Want to make sure I've got a, an acceptable image which I have. That's one more. And I'll let the trace run until it's gone onto a new screen and then we'll switch the engine off because the decay value is also of use. So, engine off. And let's capture that. And now we can review the information. So I need to go back to the first relevant image. This is a point at which we uh, started the engine. So obviously, um, key off. Uh, there's no activity at all from the sensor. Briefly switch the key on, crank and start. So the process of actually cranking and starting the engine was pretty quick. Let's take a look at this feature here. So I'm going to use that part of the tool to expand. That's badly drawn. Let's start again. I want to capture all of that event. Now you can see several things now. A, that by expanding into the image, we have a lot more um, uh, detail in the image. We use quite a high sampling rate. So there's lots of data in the, in the image. And the image is quite clean because of the floating ground reference. So it's diagnostically very useful because what this is actually uh, indicating is each intake induction pulse or event or turbulence is being reported electronically. And what we expect to see from a map sensor that's working effectively, that the response is very quick, that there's a lot of clear activity, individual, individual intake um, events. In other words, when each intake valve opens, you'll see a reaction in the manifold vacuum. And you can also see evidence here of the idle control device taking control of the actual engine idle speed as well. So there's a number of, of interesting features. If we expand into that again, so we have quite a high sample rate, so we can go into that several times. And, and you can see from this image, if we just move that box out of the way, that the detail is quite amazing. So we're actually looking at individual engine intake events as seen electronically through the map sensor. This gives me a great deal of confidence that the actual uh, sensitivity of the component is good. Let's go back to the, the full image and let's take a look at the next frame. We looked at smooth idle. That's what we expect to see. Nice smooth engine, nice smooth signal from the, the map sensor. Let's take a close look and we can zoom into this several times. A lot of data here. You can see now, once again, individual events, um, individual turbulence in, in the, uh, the manifold, which of course should all be smooth and symmetrical, which indeed they are. And the final, um, or, or should I say the, the next event we want to look at, is the wide open throttle test. Now, this is often 
used and displayed in connection with other sensors, such as the lambda sensor. In this case, we've, we've done it in isolation. When we open the throttle, we convert the pressure, which we know was about 37 kPa, 20 inches of mercury, um, instantly should convert to, to back to atmospheric pressure because we've got a wide open throttle, which means we should see a high voltage. And you can see that the transition was virtually instant. So if I zoom into that part, focus just on the, the rise time of the sensor, you can see an incredibly smooth uh, response time. That tells me that the sensor isn't blocked or contaminated because if it was, there'd be a delay in that rise time and reaction, and there isn't. So I'm quite quite pleased quite pleased with that. The next part of the um, evaluation is the downside. In other words, when we lift off the throttle, obviously the response... Uh, now you now have a very high vacuum. When you close the throttle, having increased the engine speed, you get a very high reaction. So of course the vacuum here in, in the manifold is much higher than the tidal, and we do see that event. So that would suggest there aren't any air leaks in the system. Uh, although we'd use other tools to, to prove uh, an air leak. And of course, this again is the response of the idle control device, which is a stepper motor in our case, in recovering the, en the engine idle speed back to its normal value. And you can see the idle speed has recovered. So once again, we can use the map sensor to determine a lot of events that take place. We repeated the, pet the, 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 the test twice, no problems there. And the final frame, we looked at the closing event, in other words, when we switch the engine off. This is the return from manifold vacuum, engine running, back to a static engine, atmospheric. And once again, let's just move that little box out of the way. Now you can see from that nice smooth idle event, as soon as the engine stops rotating, there's no turbulence in the manifold anymore, and the voltage rises and recovers perfectly. The actual value of the voltage is all critical. The fact that the image and the profile looks good is part of the analysis. The actual value of the voltage is also uh, very important, and this has to be known. Um, it has to be accurate within 0.2 of a volt. The, these components are quite sensitive to, to error, and I did make the point that if they drift by as much as 0.2, 0.3 of a volt, it will change the fueling characteristics of the engine, um, and there may not be a DTC to cover that. You may have fuel trim errors. You may even have errors that suggest there's a lambda sensor fault, but the core um, cause, uh, not symptoms, could of course be the map sensor. Short presentation, focusing on just one component. I hope you found this of interest. If you want to develop your diagnostic skills further, please visit AutoInform or our website for further details. We do conduct face-to-face -face training and have on offer a number of tutorial DVDs which will assist in diagnosis.